Hey everyone, it's Pooh again. Uh, before I get started with this uh, video, I'd like to go ahead and introduce um, Art. I don't know if I'd call it fan art, although um, we do follow each other. I like her videos, I feel like she likes mine. But new art by Crazy here. She uh, went ahead and fixed my uh, Pooh avatar, which I greatly appreciate. Now, uh, the funny thing about it is, is, as she was watching my last video, so she tweeted to me that. Uh, the pixels were hurting her eyes, so she just went ahead and rendered this new uh, avatar for me. So this will be what is in my videos from uh, here on indefinitely. And again, thank you so much, Crazy Hair. I will uh, link her up in the uh, uh, video through annotations or link her up in the description bar. But thanks a lot for that, Crazy Hair. Love you much. I certainly do appreciate it. But one thing before I move on to the video, Crazy, if you're watching this video, I still would like to continue to petition you for an appearance on your Shit Lords with Vaginas video, or uh, whenever you do another live stream of that. Yes, no vag, but uh, I'm hoping that you'll at least uh, let me identify as transgendered uh, to female for at least one episode. Then I'll go back to being my usual self. Anyway, folks, let's get on with this video. Here. To begin, I love the American fashion industry, but it has a lot of problems. Consider this. When the actress Leslie Jones couldn't find anything to wear to her Ghostbusters premiere, she had to call out on social media to find someone to dress her. How did that happen? Gee, Tim, I don't know. I mean, it could be that they just did not want to associate their brand with Leslie Jones. Uh, I imagine that they typically want to pick some of the more beautiful actresses by conventional standards, which to those standards, Leslie Jones is not. I'm not going to go ahead and say that she's utterly fugly, even though she is, but they have that choice to associate their brand with whomever they want to or not want to. Tim, you know this. Would it surprise you to know that the average American woman now wears between a size 16 and a size 18? And shame on us for that, Tim. That shouldn't be the way it is. As someone who is also overweight and not living healthily, I understand this about myself, it's a shame on us for allowing ourselves to get to this point to where this is now the average woman's size. Several years ago, Dr. Pamela Peake wrote on the WebMD blog or asked the, answered the question, just what is an average woman's size anymore? If you want to read the full article, you can just Google the question that the article is titled as. But the thing that I found interesting about what Dr. Peak had to say in this article is that 50 years ago, the average woman was five foot three inches to four inches with a waist size of approximately 24 to 25 inches. And she weighed about 120 pounds and wore a size eight. Curiously, over the last 20 years, fashion model sizes have dropped from eight to zero. Uh, there was actually a uniform size system for women's clothes until the U.S. Department of Commerce dropped it in 1983, noting that the traditional sizes were no longer reflecting the size and shape of the average consumer. Today, in order to cater to women's vanity, as women have gotten larger, designers have manipulated sizes so that the truly larger sizes are marked as smaller. A size, um, a size 8 in the 50s is now a size four or less today. So from what we can see here, the sizes have actually been manipulated to basically, as she stated, cater to women's vanities. So I don't really understand what Tim's problem here is as far as size goes. Um, if he wants to make these women feel smaller, he can certainly you know, start resizing their uh, fashion needs here. She is what the industry calls a plus size woman, a term that I would like to erase. There are more than 80 million of these women in America and for the past three years they have increased their spending on clothes faster than their straight size counterparts. But many designers refuse to make clothes for them. They pretend that they don't even exist. And to that end, I sympathize with them. It's not easy for larger men to go out and shop inexpensively for clothing for themselves. They usually have to go to specialty stores that cater to their size. If you're someone like myself who is overweight but not very tall, uh, the big and tall sections don't necessarily cater to 
men of my stature the best either because they don't always have just large extra large extra extra large in stock they usually have that in that size and tall so someone like myself who's about five nine five ten usually winds up buying a shirt that almost fits them like a dress and there's a lot of material to have to tuck into your pants so i sympathize with them but guess what tim it's not the fashion industry's fault they market to the larger demographic and if they do happen to make clothes for a smaller demographic they typically charge more for that tim that's on us us larger folks that is not on the fashion industry uh, like I said, I sympathize with them, but I don't blame them. Does it frustrate me at times? Yes, but it's still my fault. And to that, I understand that there are some people who are overweight that do have medical conditions, but that is a smaller number than those of us who make lifestyle choices to not live as healthy as we could be. So, so if you're an overweight person watching this video, don't lose your shit on me. I've spoken to many people in the industry about this, and the overwhelming response is, I'm not interested in her. Well, it seems as though I guessed correctly in this. Okay, so what, Tim? They're not interested in her. Did you design this dress for Leslie Jones? I mean, for crying out loud, you're complaining about it. Did you actually engage her? Well, let's see what the rest of their video says here. They say the plus size woman is complicated, different, and difficult and that no two size 16s are alike. That's for dang sure. And it's not just like this for women, it's also like this for men that we all tend to store our fat in different areas. But it seems to be a little bit more peculiar for women. Uh, sometimes women store a lot of their fat in their breasts, some in their midsection. A lot of them get their fat stores in their asses <laughs> and their thighs. So yes, they're no two plus size women tend to be alike they seem to be a little bit different some of them are shaped more similarly similarly to others but when you start getting up to 16s um it starts to get kind of precarious as far as how each woman is going to be shaped let's decode that the fashion industry works from standards established decades ago habits are hard to break from the runway to magazines, pictures of how clothes are supposed to look, how women are supposed to look, are set. And it all revolves around thinness. Well, firstly, Tim, if an adult woman is letting uh, me, some form of media dictate to them how they are going to feel about what they should look like, then I think their problems go a little bit deeper than just not being able to find something to wear. Uh, Self-esteem sounds to be more of the problem. And there are ways for them to get around an issue like that. There are other issues involved, and still, there are other issues to help them get around those as well. For decades, models have trotted down the runway with bodies that are completely unattainable for most women. Yet we've been conditioned to think that that's what looks good. Men try to attain these unattainable bodies. For fuck's sakes, I'm sure a lot of women do not even want to get this thin. But it also comes back to what I just said. It's more about self-esteem issues. They care about what the media tries to sell to them as what are ideal phys uh, physiques for women. They're comfortable with themselves. They don't feel the need to be very thin. Hopefully, at the very least, they want to be healthy. And Tim, I'd like to see some citation on exactly how we've been conditioned. I'm not thoroughly convinced. There is no reason why larger women can't look just as fabulous as all other women. It's a design issue and not a customer issue. The key is the following. It's the harmonious balance of silhouette, proportion, and fit. Right now, most plus-size designs make the body look larger with box pleats and shoulder pads. Trust that I'm not trivializing the task. It's challenging. Designs need to be reconceived, not just sized up. And done right, our clothing can create an optical illusion that helps us look taller and slimmer. But done wrong, we look worse than if we were, well, naked. Plus size women deserve fashion and they deserve choices. I don't necessarily disagree with this, but Tim, we should also 
be putting out there the choice to be thinner, to get healthier. That should also be incorporated without feeling like we might body shame people if that happens to be your concern. There are ways to tell people that we need to be healthier without making them feel ashamed of themselves. Now, some people I know like to shame them, but you're not one of those people, so there are ways to do it. And the thing is, Tim, is that people trust you. So you can't speak to that end without letting these people, or having these people rather, feel shame. I'm not looking for solutions from high-end designers because it's a given that they don't want their precious brands tarnished by the likes of a size 16. This message is for more accessible designers. It's time to step up to the plate. Furthermore, why aren't retailers demanding that this be done? The retailers have plenty of leverage, as in, Marc Jacobs, if you want to continue to own the current space that you have in our store, then we also need clothing for our larger market. Is Tim making a play on words here? Larger market? I don't know. Well, look, for the sake of brevity, I don't want to go into any other research, but I am curious to know what Tim Gunn himself has done to start designing clothes for the larger market. Um... If anybody has an answer to this, please feel free to comment on it. But you can't make demands on people to expand their market whilst not actually attempting to provide any clothing for that market. It kind of goes back to like Anita Sarkeesian wanting video games to be a particular way without actually trying to put any intellectual property to produce something that falls into line what she, with what she wants as a video game. 14 plus is now the shape of women in this nation. And that is not something to brag about. And designers need to wrap their creative minds around that. No, Tim, they don't need to do anything. Should they? Well, that's up to them. You can make that suggestion, but don't tell these people what they need to do. I profoundly believe that women of every size can look great. And in this time of inclusiveness, why should 80 million women be marginalized? Because, Tim, it isn't necessarily healthy to be that size or larger. Look, having done some introspection upon my own size, Tim, I realize that if these people, these designers, keep making clothes to a larger crowd, it's actually a form of enableism, and we don't need to be doing that to ourselves. Designers, make it work. Again, it's interesting that he kind of puts this back on the fashion industry itself. After doing a quick Google search, I did not find anything that shows that Tim Gunn is actually in the process of designing clothes for plus-size women or larger men. Basically, he's just complaining about it. Here's a man who actually already does have enough wealth that he doesn't need to do it, but if he was that concerned about it, could actually increase his wealth if he started designing and manufacturing clothes for larger people. But again, without doing a thorough search, just as a quick search, it doesn't appear as though he's participating. He's just complaining about it. Well, anyway, folks, that does it for this video. Thanks for stopping by, and thank you again for Crazy Hair on the new Avatar design. It is uh, a little bit cleaner, so I enjoy it. Anyway, folks, thanks for stopping by. Tim Gunn, it is you who has flung the poo. Thanks again, guys.